Hey guys, today we are discussing tips and tricks to be able to get quicker in the salon. So to be able to do faster nails, to be able to get your client in and back out, all while doing a very good nail. So if that's something that interests you, please stay tuned. Okay, so the first thing to think about is to make sure each one of your steps is totally and entirely on point before you try to speed it up. So if your clients are coming back in with like a lot of lifting or a lot of breakage, now's not the time to try to speed things up because clearly you need to work on your prep and on your apex placement and kind of those things are for another video, but there's lots of videos out about them um, until I get one out. So search that like you need to make sure that you're doing a really on point nail that's coming back with no lifting and no breakage or like minimal of each i there's wear and tear we have the nails for an hour they have the nails for three weeks that's always something to keep in the back of your mind as well and there's many many factors that go into it but that is something to keep in mind Anyhow, that's another video as well. I see this is gonna be a tangent day. So making sure the nails are on point before you're trying to speed things up. So make sure that things are looking real good. Your shape is coming, everything's coming. Also, there's a little bit of factor in there that some people work better under pressure, so keep that in mind too. Sometimes that little bit of pressure will cause you or bring you more drive to be better so you know yourself so the next thing to look into is film yourself set up your phone it doesn't have to be anything amazing if you have one of these little phone stands you can kind of set up your phone and film from it this way so just kind of randomly set it up somewhere and film yourself if you're filming yourself, you're going to be able to, number one, time everything all in one step because you're filming, so you're going to know. Number two, you're going to be able to hear yourself. I mean, obviously you're not gonna post this, so whatever you and your client are talking about still stays personal, but you're going to be able to know if you stop when you're talking. Some people, when they talk, they like to stop and look up and look at their client. Don't look at, their, don't look at the client. You're, you're not here to make eye contact. Keep your head down. So while you're filing or while you're working, if your client wants to talk, that's fine, but none of this, none of the looking up and making eye contact with them. So after you've managed to film yourself, you can also take a piece of paper and jot down how long it takes you to prep, how long it takes you to prime even, um, how long it takes you to do just certain steps and see where you think you can bring it down a little bit. It never hurts to watch some full videos too. Um, like Tabitha Scott has a few full videos out there. You can kind of see her working and she is voicing over her videos. So she's not talking while she's working. So she is just working. So you're able to, I mean, I'm sure she's edited, but you're able to see how long it's taking her to do certain things. There's also other people out there that post videos of like full, like hour long or whatever sets of nails. Um, it never hurts to look into that and just see how long it's taking them. It doesn't mean you need to mimic that, but it'll give you a good base number. So the next step is making sure your products are close at hand. If you notice, even in your video, like jumping back to this video thing, if you notice that you're like reaching over here to get your polish remover and then you're reaching over here again to get your alcohol, maybe you are opening and closing drawers trying to figure out what is where. Move stuff around a little bit. Keep stuff really, really, really close at hand. You don't want to be wasting time reaching for files, reaching for product, reaching for alcohol. I keep looking over here because my desk is over here. You don't, you don't need that. It's, it's not worth your time. It's just not worth anything. So running hand in hand with making sure that your products are close is another thing. I use a different file for each client. Um, that's up to you. Personal personal opinion or law, depending on where you are. But if you go through and score, like if you are somebody that scores your files, that takes time. 
sit down, go through, score all your files, score a hundred files at a time, bring them home and, you know, sit and watch TV and score the files, whatever it is that makes you happy. But score those files first. And that is something that I never ever thought of until I was researching this video. That is a wonderful idea. Another thing that I use, and you've seen it in my tutorial videos, is the blue shop towels down. I cut them and they're, I use them for wiping my acrylic brush and I also use them for wiping um, my art brushes. Pre-cut those. Like I sit down with a roll or two or sometimes three and a big freezer Ziploc bag and pre-cut those, have them all ready. I just bring them in, throw them in a bottom drawer. And when I need to replace the stack in my closer drawer, I just throw them in there and they're all set. So another factor when trying to decide what's where your extra time is coming from is how your clients are coming back in. So I kind of talked about this in the beginning, but I'm jumping back to it because it's really important. If your client is coming back in with a lot of lifting, then maybe you need to look at your prep. Maybe that's something you need to kind of go through really slowly on your own, of course, or with a friend or even with another nail tech and just see what's happening there. Maybe, oh, there's so many maybes. There's a thousand maybes when it comes to prep. Um, I don't think I'll get into those today, but maybe your prep just isn't on point and you're filing a lot of lifting when they're coming back in. So if you're filing lifting and cleaning up lifting for a half an hour, that's a half an hour. Hour. like that is too long 10 minutes like it shouldn't take you that long to prep the nail for more product so just keep that in mind if it's something that is consistently coming back you're consistently coming back with a lot of lists or something take a look at your prep so another thing that might help is using your spare time properly. So in your spare time, watch other people do nails. That actually helps. I have been at this for almost 20 years and I still watch other people do nails. Sorry, God, my hair is here. I still watch other people do nails and it helps. It's, I'm picking up tips from them. I'm picking up little tricks. They'll like do a little hand flick with nail file or something like that. And I'm like rewinding, what was that? I need to do that. It happens. It happens all the time. It happens to me. It happens to people that's been doing nails longer than me. So watch some nails in your spare time. Not like that, but it helps you pick up art and it helps you pick up, it's, it's just something I really recommend. Obviously, you wanna make sure the people you are watching are professional and are doing things the proper way, but you'll get to know who you want to watch. And I mean, of course, you know, I have some suggestions. You can watch Sarah from Sarah's Nail Secrets. You can watch Annabelle that has glitter bells. You can watch Talia. Uh, you can watch Tabitha Scott. I've mentioned her before. Those are just off the top top of my head and those are also uh, well no those are acrylic and gel because I do mainly acrylic so a lot of times I kind of but Tabitha Scott does both um Sarah even does both and Talia does both so anyway just go and look and I even still watch gel videos even though it's not my main product because I still do feel like you can learn from those videos so the next tip is going to be the more nails you do the busier you are the more you need to look after yourself point blank it's not something that we all like to do. You need to get yourself a good massage therapist. You need to make sure you're drinking a lot of water. You need to even go so far as to get yourself a don't know why I say it that way, it goes so far. Mm. Get yourself a good chiropractor, um, stretch, do the things. Believe me, like I said, I've been at this for a really long time. You're gonna start to hurt. The quicker you work, the more people you can do in the run of a day. And if you're not taking your breaks, stretching, doing the things, you're not gonna feel good. You're gonna hurt, it's gonna slow you down. So if you're, you know, you're filing and you have to stop and you're like, oh goodness, you know, that hurts that's time that's taking time away from your service that's even making you late it's making you flustered and it's making you sore and then you can't enjoy your free time at the end of the evening because you're hurting so make sure you're looking after yourself do what you need to do i know a lot of people struggle with things like carpal tunnel i do really think that that can be avoided with the proper massage therapy again for another video so the next thing we need to talk about is a funny subject you need to not let your clients waste your time. That can be taken a lot of different ways, but seriously, don't let your clients waste your time, but be crafty about it. Let your clients know that it's not acceptable to be late. Let your clients know that it's not acceptable to be super early either. So that's just a conversation you have to have with them, but your clients being late, if your client is 15 minutes late, make sure you're cutting 15 minutes off her appointment. That sucks, it sounds harsh, but that 15 minutes, especially if she's your first or second client of the day, you can't run 15 minutes behind all day. That's not fair to your clients. That's not fair to you. It's not fair to anybody. So if she's 15 minutes late and she rushes in, you know, and, and she's flustered and she sits down and she's like, oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. My kid was 
sick this morning and uh, you know I'm late you can easily quickly and efficiently explain to her it's okay I just have to make sure that we're still done on time so that the rest of the day runs smoothly she's going to understand that she's human so make sure that you are not running late because someone's running late it's up to you how you handle it you might want to reschedule them you might want to just cut them by like 15 minutes maybe it means they get straight polish no accent nails no art usually for me that's what that means I still do the client I rarely reschedule people when they're running late just because again I've been at this for a while and I can cut corners you know I can cut the right corners so that they still get a good nail but yet we're out 15 minutes before so just do that also if you have somebody that's super bad at picking out polish address that right from the get-go okay color are we doing today and as the discussion goes on while you're finished filing is when you really need to buckle down and get that answer <laughs> Then if, if you're getting to the last few nails that you're finished filing and they still haven't picked out a color, I will just jokingly say, if you don't pick one, I will. If you don't pick one, I'm gonna. Because we can't sit here for an extra 20 minutes past your appointment picking a color. It's just how it is. Some people are indecisive. Sometimes you just need to pick out three. Those are the people that you're not giving swatches to. You need to pick out three colors and be like, here. These are the three popular colors this week, or maybe you're wearing them or whatever the case is. And they're, they kind of appreciate that. They'll pick a lot easier that way. The next tip is making sure that your equipment is all in good working order. So that means your bits, your e-file, like your, that your bits aren't dull if you are using carbide bits. It means, like I said before, making sure that your files are scored, whatever the case is there, towels are cut. Um, the next thing is maybe you need to get another light. Like if you're doing gel nails, maybe you need another light because this back and forth thing, sorry, this back back and forth <laughs> is wasting time for you. I got another light um, and since I do strictly acrylic, I didn't quite notice that there was a difference in timing. But for me, it was just, it was uncomfortable for people to have one hand in the light and one hand to me, however they were doing it. That's not, it's just not comfortable. This summer when it was really busy and I had some extra money floating around, I got another light. They don't match, but anyway, it's neither here nor there. But that way they're in this way and it's just so much easier for people. And again, if you do gel nails, like you really need that in and out. Um, so that is going to cut like five or seven minutes off each one of your services. So I really hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions or comments, down below. I will try to link some nail art videos up here, wherever it is, just to be able to watch those and maybe you can speed yourself up some. Maybe you can take some tips from them. So again, down below, if you have any questions or comments, make sure you've liked the video. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please make sure you do so. It means a lot to my channel. There's gonna be a little end card pop up and on the right, there's going to be a video that I think you're gonna wanna watch. And on the left, there's gonna be a video that YouTube thinks you're gonna wanna watch. And I hope you watch them both. Have a great day.